I'm Brandon Jackson. Uh, I own and operate Riverside Fly Shop in Jasper, Alabama, uh, technically Bug Tussle, Alabama. We, uh, we're a full service shop, so we have all of the gear. We do guided trips, uh, both wading and out of our drift boat. And um, we'd love to see, see you if you're ever in Alabama. We're on the only trout stream in the state, the only year-round trout stream in the state. And so we take people out, show them how to uh, fish for rainbow trout especially. We'll also do brim and bass, uh, striped bass and other things as well. Uh, this pattern is one that we've had some good success with here recently. And it's a crane fly nymph. And it's uh, based on the Gary LaFontaine sparkle pupa style of fly. And so we're just going to go with uh, a size 6, uh, 1x long. We're going to put a bead on there. Get that on and get it in the hook. It's just a black bead. Um, haven't had a lot of success with silver or white. That black is the ticket for this pattern. Get a thread dam started to keep the bead from sliding around too much. Get it nice and built up behind it. Keep it from forcing its way back and messing everything up. Cut the tag. And we're just going to go back all the way to the bend. Once we get to the bend, we're going to take some white or cream uh, polypropylene yarn. And here's the, the only little tricky part, I suppose, for this pattern. You're going to take that, um, that strand of polypropylene, press it down, in and around the shank of the hook so that you get it good and surrounded. Then we're going to tie over and through so do it, we capture all of those in that position. Carry it back just to make sure we got it. Tie those straggly ends down. And then we can start on a dubbed body. The dubbed body is, is not the style that we would typically do with a sow bug or a scud. Um, it's more like a dry fly in terms of the way that we're putting the, um, the dubbing on. This is some super fine along with some natural fibers. And it's a cream and light olive mix. And um, that just gives us a nice base at the bottom. Get it on there and smooth it out. We're just building up enough of a body that that it can be seen through the shuck that we're going to add here in just a moment. So we get that on. Go with another Another set, you can use dubbing wax if you want. You could make a dubbing loop if you wanted to, but we're not pulling these fibers back out. So that isn't, um, isn't nearly as critical for what we are doing. I'm just trying to make it fairly smooth. Um, that crane fly, it almost looks like a, like a grub worm underneath and uh, you get it going, and you want to build up a, a nice, nice body in there. This one's turning out to be almost segmented with the, the uh, olive and then the white. And again, just not... This isn't where the most critical part comes in, but it is important to get a good body on there, get it tied down, almost there. Oops. That. All right, so we're going to finish off the dubbing. Okay. 
And then we're going to take that shuck. We're going to measure it by pulling forward pretty tight, changing fingers, and leaving about an eighth of an inch. And then we'll cut that there. Let it come back to the back. Use a bodkin to separate those fibers as much as possible. The better your separation is here, the better the finished fly will look. Get it separated here on this other side. There we go. And then I just press from the back forward, trying to go through the middle so that it wraps around that hook. All those wispy fibers just lay down going forward, pull tight, give it a little, a little pull, and then shove back just a tiny amount to give it a little bit of slack. Take my thread, tie it off again right behind the eye of the, or the bead of the hook. Pull the, the extra leftover pieces up. Cut them as close as possible. Take that thread and wrap down those tips that we just cut off. And then we're going to take a little bit of black and gray dubbing. It's got a little bit of sparkle in it, but not a lot. Put it on there fairly sparse. Come up. Making a little collar. And then we're going to take our whip finisher. Two, three, five. Right there. Cut it off. And you have a a nice crane fly imitation. When it gets wet, um, those poly yarn fibers will come translucent. You'll be able to see that body a little bit more, but it just gives a really good profile, a uh, really good look. I'd fish it either dead drifting it or maybe with a little bit of movement, uh, kind of an insect crawl, uh, just to, to make it a little bit more noticeable. But we dead drift them and, and catch a lot of trout, brim, and bass all on this pattern.